Welcome everybody to this live stream session. Over the past two years, we've been grappling with how, how do we think about the food system? How do we get a sustainable food system, a nutritious food system, an equ equitable food system, a climate smart food system? And on your screen, I'm, they'll put up a link to the report that's come out after these two years of thinking about this issue. We've been doing it with hundreds of partners, getting input, and we've, we've come down to 11 key actions to overhaul, to revolutionize, to transform, to change the direction of the food system. And today we're having 11 events. We've been in Canberra, Hanoi, New Delhi, Addis Ababa, Rome, and now in the Netherlands. It's good that we've come from the Rome where the, where the focus was on youth movements and social movements in raising our ambitions and making change. And actually social movements have done a fantastic thing for the for food loss and waste, which is the session we're looking at today. So for example, in the Netherlands and in Denmark, there've been some major rethinking around food waste as a result of social movements. So there was a good movement from Rome to the Netherlands. Uh, in the report, there's, we're looking at adaptation and mitigation. And if I just think about mitigation at the moment, we see three real strong priorities. One is zero conversion of high carbon uh, landscapes, peatlands, forests. That has to happen. The other one is changing diets. It's going to have a major impact in, in relation to mitigation. And the third one, which is the focus of this session, is on food loss and waste. So if I could just go to the slides, please, and I'll briefly introduce uh, the food loss and waste uh, issue. So by 2030, the target we see is a 50% reduction in food loss and waste. In five major supply chains is where we see the focus. More efficient supply chains, delivering minimal food loss, food loss and waste. This means the demand for food production can be reduced proportionally, leading to lower production uh, emissions. So the rationale behind this, this is the situation more or less now, 1.7 gigatons of food loss and waste globally and this equates to 2.1 gigatons of carbon dioxide emissions equivalents. To put this number in perspective, this is almost 25% of the problem that we have to deal with in the food system in terms of emissions. We grow food, we throw it away, and essentially we've, we've just been putting greenhouse gas emissions out for nothing. There's numerous opportunities for reducing food loss and waste. Um, and a key piece of it is, uh, is work around identifying which supply chains we need to prioritize and which are the major loss points on these supply chains. This is really complicated stuff. So for example, tomatoes produced in a certain way can be really problematic in terms of uh, emissions, but, but tomatoes produced in another way can be no problem at all. How, we, ha we have to do lots of work on all these different supply chains. In terms of the, the, uh, the focus five chains that we believe are really important will be meat, bovine meat, vegetables, fruits, dairy, and roots and tubers. Uh, so what are some of the proposed actions? And this is just a very high level summary. Uh, first of all, thinking about reducing loss at the farm level. Uh, lots of um, uh, work needed around uh, improving harvesting, processing and storage. In terms of reducing waste, uh, one of the key things is we, we need a closer connection between consumers and farmers. How do we have a system where we can produce exactly what is needed as opposed to producing and then potentially not getting it consumed? 
awareness campaigns, organizing awareness campaigns. Uh, and we've seen major successes, for example, in the Netherlands and, and Denmark around this and a real change in, in attitudes towards uh, food, food waste. Key piece is developing regulations and incentives. So a major role for governments. And then thinking about recycling and upcycling waste. For both of these, we think there's a major role for the private sector in terms of measuring food loss and waste and implementing food loss and waste policies. And we've seen some, some really creative and great uh, actions from some private sector players already. Uh, so the, today's event is from the Netherlands. Why the Netherlands? Um, to do any of these actions, we need really significant partnerships. And the Netherlands has been showing uh, great leadership in a, in a number of initiatives, including in food loss and waste. So for example, in 2015, they held the, the No More Food to Waste conference. And out of that came the Champions 12.3 initiative linked to the SDG 12.3, SDG which is around reducing food loss and waste. They've, in the Netherlands, there's also a task force for circular economy in food, which brings together all different pieces of the food sector together to try and uh, produce a circular economy. We also have, today we have two panelists from the Netherlands. I won't introduce them. I'm gonna leave that to the facilitator. And instead I'll introduce Gabby, Gabriel Burian, who's the Director of Sustainability at Bayer. And so over to you, Gabby. Thank you, Bruce. Hello, everybody. I couldn't be more proud, honored, and humble to be part of this global event. I really appreciate uh, being here. Uh, then, today we'll be talking at this session about reducing food loss and waste. As Bruce said, this is really key. And uh, it was interesting to see that the session before, in fact, talking about climate mentioned this as part of the solution. Then it will be really awesome to see what our awesome panelists have to say about this. But before we start, I want to ensure everyone has the opportunity to be part of this interactive discussion. Then what we have are two, in fact, tools. First of all, make sure you download the app, the Hoover app, W-H-O-V-A. Uh, if you download the app, you can go to the session questions and answers, select our session, reducing food loss and waste, click ask a session, type your session and submit. And for the pooling is very similar. You go to the app, you click post and you start to submit your answers. Then this is how we'll be uh, going ahead. Then. With that, we'll be starting our discussion with a first question, in fact, for you all to participate, and then we can use this also to warm up with the panelists. Here you have the questions. The, uh, here you have, in fact, the, how to download, and then the question is, how much land is used for us to produce food that's lost or waste? Then the question should be in front of you now. While you are taking time to answer this question, this is the first one, we have another one after this one. But while you are answering this question, uh, I want to introduce the two great panelists that we have, we have the honor to be with now. Then, uh, first of all, we have the ambassador, yes permanent representative of Kingston of Netherlands, of course, to the United Nations Organizations for Food and Agriculture, Hans Hugenfeng. His name says uh, everything. He has been a lifetime warrior about food loss and waste. Then we are very honored, happy to have him with us. Thank you, Hans. And to make sure we had a perfect Fit. We have also a senior scientist from Wageningen, yes. Uh, she has been implementing sustainable food and agriculture strategy for public and private entities around the world for 20 years. Then she is now leading the task force Food Loss and Waste, and she's the own Heike Axman. 
with whom we have been also, my team has been have the pleasure to discuss a lot of opportunities too. Then I'm only using those two points because if we would go to the entire bio, we wouldn't have time to discuss them. Let's go back to our discussions. Now, I, I believe you all have started already to answer. And uh, we can go to the second question. And with that, we can turn our discussions with the panelists. Then let's go to the second question now. In the, in the, then everyone can participate answering the second question now. Do we have there? That is, what can be key scaling interventions designed to accelerate and spread adoption of policies and practices to help achieve the 50% reduction in food loss and waste aligned to reach out to the sustainable development goal as Bruce mentioned. Then while you are answering, let me start and uh, let's start with Hans. Hans, we know that food loss and waste represent in fact a big size. And this big size that people are answering now is the area of China, represents also greenhouse gas, that's 8%, water consumption too, and uh, as Bruce said, there is a lot that has been uh, all the social areas, everything that has been prepared to produce this food that is lost. Then Hans, let's start with you and then we go to Heike. What do you think, before we answer this question, what do you think we could do in order to, uh, to overcome this challenge as a society? Over to you, Hans. Thank you very much, Gabriela, and it's great to be with you and with all the participants in this webinar. So I would say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, and I hope that we can focus on actions, because I think that is what we need now. I think we have clearly defined our policies and what we can do. And I have to say we are living in unprecedented times, especially because of the COVID-19 pandemic. We have to respond also to the severe consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic. And, and all the analysis of the uh, consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic, you see food losses. Food losses is one of the areas which we have to tackle and we have to tackle soon. We cannot wait anymore for our response. And of course, we know that we know the facts that we are having an increasing number of people living in hunger. 108, 121 million people, and the number is increasing, also because of the COVID-19 crisis. We are living in the decade of action for the Sustainable Development Goals, but we have to show action now. And we know that we have to transition our food systems to foster healthy people, especially focusing on affordable, sustainable diets, nutritious, and healthy food. We have to focus on transition to healthy planet, especially focus on climate change, you already said, but we also have to transition our food system towards healthy economies so that we have an inclusive economic and social growth, also focusing on safety nets and the rural people. So what do we have to do? We know many of the answers, but we have to bring it to the country level because we know that if we bring it to the country level, we can start action. And that I think is already done now via this webinar, but certainly also by the World Bank and FAO because they have mapped the countries, the problems in the countries, it's called heat maps or country profiles, where we can tackle food problems and obstacles in the food system, and especially with, related to food losses and food waste. And we know that 70% in Africa is lost directly during harvest or post-harvest. But we know that we have the technology so we know that we have to look, focus on the packaging. We know that we have to focus on cold chain systems, but how are we going to do it? I think there we can do a couple of things. First, I think everything begins, of course, with political commitment at the country level, not only in the global level, the global level we have it. It's easy to commit yourself at the global level, but it's more difficult to commit yourself at the country level. There we have to focus on the ownership of the, <coughs> the countries and especially governments. 
And that means that we have to ask those governments to prioritize food losses in their NDCs, their national determined contributions to climate change and a sustainable development. Furthermore, I think what we have to do is we have to pilot countries where we are going to show that tackling food losses is what is characterized now as low hanging fruit in order to get progress. And there, I think we are committing, FEO, the Netherlands, together with World Bank, we are committing to go to six countries, to organize six roundtables in the second half of this year, to sit together with local government, with the national governments, but also with the private sector in those countries and ask them, what can we do for you to tackle the problems in the food losses in your country? We bring with us, of course, international organizations, but also international private sector, because I think private sector is the key in solving the problem of food loss, because they have the technologies, they have the investments, they know how to build a cold storage system, they know the new technologies on post harvest losses, for example, precision agriculture. That's what we have to do. And when we speak about food losses, and Bruce was saying in, in his opening words, perhaps we need a revolution. We certainly need transformational change in how we work together. And perhaps we need a revolution in how we work together. Because we have to make it a joint effort. Now we see too much that governments are working in a silo, and geos are working in a silo as well as the private sector. We have to bring them together. That's why we start working in three to six countries with a round table to build a real partnership on the ground for impact and solutions on the ground on the food losses in those countries with real investment progress based on the country profile so that we know what we have to tackle and how we're going to do it. And of course, we need universities like the Wageningen University to, to make sure that we are using it, using the latest information, the latest science. Thank you, Gabby. Over. Thank you, Hans. That's perfect, fantastic. And please count on us for the round tables. Uh, now let's turn over to Haik. Haik, uh, can you share a little bit from your perspective, what could we do a little more actions on the ground also in the same direction to avoid this food loss and waste? Mm -hmm. Haik, over to you. Yes, thank you, thank you, uh, Gabriela, and and welcome to the audience. I'm very, it's my honor to be here today and uh, share with uh, you some of our knowledge here in this short webinar. Um, yeah, this is uh, for sure a question we could talk about uh, a day, but um, if I go into look at it into at it from a helicopter view, uh, I think it's important to realize that our supply chains are complex. And the reason for losses and waste are very diverse. Different their supply chain and region and crop. That's why it's so important what uh, have been done to prioritize which crops are we focused on, like the five crops, focus crops we just mentioned, which are contributing to both food loss, waste and reduction, and reduction of our greenhouse gas emissions. There, there's a lot of knowledge uh, around how to use food loss and waste with scalable interventions. And we've been working on this subject matter for years. So um, what is yeah, now really needed? And that might be strange being saying that from a research institute. I think what is really needed is more leadership, more leadership on company, common level, more leadership on government level, more leadership uh, of philanthropic organization, more leadership and leaders on all kinds of other organizations who are taking actions. So I totally agree with Hans Hockerwein's statement, we need more actions. There are good examples for sure around in this relation. So like the St. Amar Rice platform who have um, signed an agreement that they're going to reduce food loss and waste by 2030 a half. And by doing so, reducing also their greenhouse gas emissions. There are other good examples for sure, like just stated the Ministry of uh, the Netherlands is working hard internationally and in the Netherlands on reducing food loss and waste. And for sure, we need funds like the Climate Change, Agriculture and Food Security Program, enabling that companies are coming into action and getting the right support and guidance to introduce the right interventions. So leadership is key here. So not only action, but also leadership on that. Of Because we need scalable intervention, we are far lagging behind and reaching the target to reach 
um, to half food waste and loss by 2030. And on the same time, we are hit heavily by COVID-19. We will talk later a bit more about that. So our food systems are suffering and are suffering more than ever before. So what do we have to offer from Wageningen mm -hmm. University and what do we think need to be done? Yes, for sure we have a lot of knowledge and that is applicable to base on even on a, on a global level or in a country like the several sector level or um, supply chain level. So we have different tools for you available. We have built a program around food loss and waste reduction, ensuring that together with our partners, the private public sector shape consortium, we can really reduce food loss and waste by 50% in 2030. Um, so we can su support um, yeah, all kind of initiative to, to make the right analysis of the hotspots and re identify really the root causes of losses and waste, which is crucial huh? because um, yeah, often we think there are quick fixes, um, like uh, we build a cold storage and then everything is solved. Nothing is often solved with only a, self, uh, a storage intervention by itself. It needs much more than that. So it needs a code of package on intervention and understanding that is key to reduce foodless waste. So we can also have to select the most prosperous intervention like we did for instance in Mozambique in our CCAPS project where we um, looked into the reduction of uh, food loss and waste in cassava. Cassava is a highly perishable crop and has to be processed as soon as possible. But the processing was far away, so a lot of food and was lost and wasted just due to transportation. So it reduced there the mobile uh, processing uh, facilities to reduce food loss and waste, and that at the same time added a lot of value to, to the product because farmers moved from raw material much supplier to really added value suppliers. So these are interesting examples, and we have been calculated the business cases for those as, or as well. And the greenhouse gas emission and the food loss and waste uh, reduction and the commerce has been a very successful method, and so there are many others. We can help building the, the redesigns of food systems, and that's highly needed. So often a single intervention won't solve it, like already explained. Like in Kenya, we are working on another use case where we look into the, sec the potato sector, reducing food mm -hmm. waste. But due to the use of the local variety over there with a very short shelf life and a high mm -hmm. loss rate, uh, the whole food system need to get adjusted to really improve the potato sector. So that's uh, not only like explained a single intervention, it needs several interventions at the right time. Um, so I could go explain much more what we can do, what we, what we can support. So what is more often crucial are sessions like these ones where people are getting together and we are providing a lot of stand, bringing stakeholders together to set up a joint again on food loss and waste. We do that uh, specifically also in India and in the Netherlands on, on programs and organize workshops uh, on sensibilization and training workloads, how to really reduce food loss and waste. Well, but finally, uh, I think the most important to do is now set targets, measure and act. Over to you, Gabriela. Thank you, that's awesome. Then leadership, key partners, redesign the food system. And uh, I love the way you finish to set target and measure. Yes, this we will need uh, both of you with this process, absolutely. Then, and you mentioned, Hag, you just mentioned COVID and I would like to, for us to touch a little bit in the, this point since we all are isolated or the majority at least, uh, who, those that can are isolated. And as a result of COVID, we have been a lot of challenge too, once again. Then uh, some farmers are not able to sell their products. Some communities have not enough to eat. Then uh, what would be necessary in order to increase the resilience or in other words, to reduce those kind of challenge that we are facing now since this seems to be coming more and more. Uh, let's start with you now like and then we go to hands this time mm -hmm. yeah thanks gabriel like you said rightly our food systems are, are suffering heavily around the world and the situations are different uh, in in the western world and the developing world 
But in base around the world, the, we, it is expected that our food loss and waste is going to be tremendously increased this year due to various reasons. Um, like you are already mentioning in the developing world, the cl border closure, uh, the restriction of transportations, uh, the lockdowns taking place currently, um, they, they don't allow uh, the farmers are going to harvest the crops, they even don't get the inputs they need. Uh, so a lot of produce which is produced might even not reach uh, the markets and might be lost and wasted. And that's a similar situation with different reasons in, 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 the, in the developing world, develop, developed world because of uh, this uh, sudden disruption of our uh, important markets for the food ser uh, service industry. A lot of food couldn't, couldn't be sold over there and they couldn't, this food couldn't find new outlets on the short term. That's a short term. So what is now needed so um, to, to overcome uh, these kinds of challenges in the future, then like you said, uh, rightly, there might be that comes the next shock to the climate um, change um, or maybe even a second COVID uh, uh, pandemic. So what needs to be done? So there is no simple solution. So that's the bad, bad news. But I think what is very important to make sure that um, we don't depend just on one market outlet. So this is the main reason for a lot of losses right now during this pandemic, because we heavily depend on one single market outlet, whereas we should look into several single market outlets, like um, there could be a local market, export market, we could valorize, process, second, um, second quality crop, and there could be even the side streams should be used. For sure, this doesn't happen by itself because it might mean that we need to grow different seed varieties than we grow currently because most of them are very specialized for a certain uh, means of use, like uh, French fries uh, to make fr potatoes to make French fries. So they're not so good for normal cooking so, or as a vegetable. So we need a different approach. Um, yeah, so what else would be needed? So we really need to, should need this, um, this uh, pandemic to really make our food systems more resilient, to, breed, to build sustainable and inclusive food systems uh, with as little food loss and waste as possible. So we have to avoid that a global health crisis becoming a food crisis as well, as well um, a food security crisis. And if we don't do anything, we might be very close to that. So again, it comes back to action and building this powerful coalitions of private-public partnership and academia to look together how can we redesign our, our suffering food system. Over to you. Okay, I, yes, we absolutely needed to redesign. Hence, related to COVID-18, what are your thoughts? Yes, the conference uh, in 2050 had the slogan no more food to waste. I think when it comes to COVID-19, it's no more time to waste. And again, I come back to, to the action. And I think what we have to do, what we have seen, is we have to restore broken food systems. We have seen that food systems and supply chains are broken. And again, we have to zoom in at the country level and perhaps regional and country level, perhaps even local level, because we have to see where the problems are and how can we help to restore those food systems, that those broken food systems. And I think there's a two-track or three-track approach. First of all, I think on the short time, we have to focus on humanitarian support because what everybody's predicting besides a humanitarian or a health crisis, we're also going perhaps into a new food crisis, even perhaps more severe than in 2008. So we have to focus on humanitarian support for those who are at a very insecure food situations and their WFP, the World Food Program, is supporting them and luckily governments are giving more funding to give to increase support at that level. Then we have to zoom in again on those broken food systems and value chains. How can we help to restore them? For example, how to restore access to markets, how to restore input for your production. And I think there we can follow, I think we should make use of this challenge in a more positive way, because we not only have to restore the food chain, but now we have the opportunity to restore them and make them also more sustainable. For example, to mitigate the climate change effects. And then, for example, we need new varieties. Uh, it was said by Heike, and I think there, especially the Netherlands, could support with their, uh, uh, I would say, seed sectors, 
with helping those countries with seeds which can produce more with less water and more sun. I think then you can make the change to a more resilient food system as well. But again, for that, we need a coalition on the ground with those who can make the business case and support those countries. And of course, we have to act on the global level as well. And there, I think what we have to do is to pressure. Pressure our political leaders and not only the ministers of agriculture, because you have to bring it at the highest level. And it's for politicians, they want to have a quick win. Food losses, tackling food losses is a quick win for politicians because they can show impact and results on the ground. We have to pressure the CEOs of companies to really invest, especially in countries in Africa, also for their future. We have to pressure heads of international charity organizations and certainly also NGOs to support that action. And of course, the World Food System, so next year, will give you the opportunity to get it done at the highest level. But again, I said, we cannot wait till next year. We have to start now and let's see how we can set pilots projects so that we can show that we can do something on the ground for those who need the most. No more time to waste, no more food to waste. Love it, no more time to waste. And it seems we can uh, come out of this, uh, this uh, panel with a coalition for action on the ground about in the technology and advocacy, then the audience is asking here to show the results of the questions that we had before. Uh, then please, Kinora, can you share the results for the first question? And after that, the results for the second question that are all very aligned to this discussion, of course. Then the first question related to the size. Uh, how much let's see the results please the slide with the results uh and uh, we can and in fact we share a chip because the results were very related to a size around china then let's see the audience their vote do we have there it and i know we have only 10 minutes to go yes here are the results then, okay, yes, great job, a great audience. They are very uh, up to the point. In fact, 28% of the agricultural land is correct. And this is, yes, as you all know, 25% of water, 8% of GG, the size of China, as we said. And uh, as Han said, this is time for action now. Then second uh, pool, the answers, please. The second one was about the actions, because then this will help us to hand over to Hans and to Hike to finalize with uh, what we could be doing after this uh, roundtable here. And I like some uh, ideas already, both of you uh, started with. Uh, then if we see the answers related to the second question, are a lot about awareness, knowledge, then 38%, in fact, think we should increase this. Second the part is uh, policies and the laws, then totally relate to what you both said. And finally, storage and facilities, processing facilities. Then I will now going back to Hans and Hike for your final thoughts, let's say about uh, thinking that this is, we are all very worried about, yes, like Hank mentioned, we don't want this health crisis to become a food crisis. We want food and health for all. Then what should we do? We are committed. What should we commit to do after this panel and after all these awesome uh, points? Uh, I will turn over first to Hans now and then to Hack to hear your thoughts about next steps for us. Everyone that's here relate to this panel here in your thoughts and uh, we are, I represent the private sector. We have uh, everyone here, in fact, research, communities, farmers. What should we do going after this, uh, this awesome panel? Uh, Hans, over to you. Thank you very much, Gabriele. Uh, as I said, my, me personally, but also the Netherlands government, IFAD, but especially FAO and World Bank have committed themselves to start in three to six countries after the summer break round tables to focus on actions on the ground in three to six countries, sitting together, 
with uh, the most involved stakeholders. And I will, as also co-chair of the Champions 12.3, approach companies who are dealing with the commodities which are under threat in those countries to get them on board for building a business case for investments in those countries. But I think also the audience can do more. I think the audience, because we know that we have to focus also on the, the producers, the smaller producers, the mid-sized producers, the bigger producers. We have to build coalitions with them on the ground to see how we together can tackle, if we are, start to invest, we need a, a corporation, a cooperative or a corporation of the farmers to get results done. Uh, and to increase, I would say, the input and output of, of restoring the food systems and bringing new value chains and access to market. But we also, as audience, can pressure, wherever you are, pressure your governments, pressure your, I would say, NGOs, pressure your companies to do more, because we have to do more, and we have to bring it not only to, I would say, the heads of units or the directors, but we have to bring it to the CEOs, the heads of states, because only then, you will get a real drive and a real movement for tackling food losses worldwide. Thank you. Thank you, Hans. Over to you, Haik. That's perfect. Yeah, thank you, Gabriela. Yeah, much has been said already in this relation. And as I totally agree with, with Hans um, that we need action now, specific action, concrete actions uh, on all. Everybody is in charge to, to do that. And we need leadership. Um, if I look uh, where we are, technical speaking, I think technical speaking, without being arrogant, I think uh, we are on track with reducing food loss and waste. So what is now really missing is the big initiatives who are coming up and saying we are going to go into the subject matter. We are going to reduce in our country and this specific food supply chain, our food loss and waste is 50%. So we need this powerful approaches. Um, so we do have a lot of supportive tools already developed uh, during the last years, and we have a lot of experience uh, how to reduce food loss and waste. Not saying that we know everything, but we have uh, a way of working uh, on the subject matter. So technical, there is, I think, full support once uh, we have more commitment also for scalable approaches. And what we need for sure is also um, the private sector is key um, here, and um, I've seen other initiatives, um, transition initiatives during the last 10 or 10, 50 years uh, in tradition on good agricultural practice and food safety and social standards. And when we started with those initiatives, our farmers said, uh, the, the, all the supply chain um, involved said, this is not possible, not at all possible. However, today, uh, it is mainstream, so uh, producers over, around the world who are delivering into the retail channel have a global gap certification, a food safety certification, they are compliant to social compliance. So why is such an initiative not possible also for food loss and waste? Uh, and in this case, example, taking the, giving the, the example from global gap, the retailers were in the lead. So uh, we need the private sector to drive next to, for sure, governments to drive this forward, the food loss and waste reduction. And I believe then we can be successful and it needs to become mainstream and not a voluntary standard uh, like it's today. Um, yeah, further, I think uh, it's good to know, like I said, I think technical, there is so much information available and, and we are improving every day for sure, but there is so much. Uh, there is uh, the target measure uh, or monitor act approach. There is a 10, 20, 30 initiative um, and the 10 scaling intervention published by Very uh, last, last year. So um, there is a lot of information which gives the right tools for companies or, or, or policymakers also to get started. I think it's important that, and that when, when you get started to also think about the trade offs with potential, uh, yeah. Uh, measures intended to reduce food loss and waste um, can help because uh, some of the measures which we are uh, which which are targeting sometimes do have uh, a lot of trade-offs and there might not be the best intervention because of that. Um, yeah, I think that's the most important thing I have to say. Um, we, so we need this powerful coalitions and come to actions. And then we are willing to support uh, companies and governments around this important subject matter. Over to you, Gabriela. 
Thank you both, Hans and Haik. It seems we have uh, an agreement here and we have the beginning of something very powerful. The private sector is on. You can certainly count on us. Our global team is fully in it. Uh, we have FAO here and we have uh, Wagner uh, and CGIAR, CAPS, of course. Then we are certainly uh, ready for the task to stand up and to be leaders of this journey. The time is now and I will hand over to Bruce. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Bruce, Hans and hi. Great, yeah. And as the as they said in the, the the youth session, the previous one, that was awesome and cool. Great, guys. <laughs> uh, so thank you very much, Gabby. We've really enjoyed working with you and Bayer in the lead up to the report and, and discussing all the different actions, not only food loss and waste, but all the other actions. And thanks, Heike and Hans as well for your insights. So we've been working with Hans now for a long time. And we look forward to ambitious coalitions, which we would love to join as well with you, Hans. Heike, I don't say we have to work more together because you actually, Wageningen University actually leads the CCAF's work on food loss and waste. So we thank you very much for that. I just wanted to perhaps pick up on two points, one from Hans and one from Heike and pull them together. But Hans says we need to focus on actions and bringing it to the country level. And I think it's, you know, the, through the NDC commitments, getting it locked into policy, and then bringing the private sector along as well, which was Hans was also mentioning. And Heike then picked up on one of your examples was business cases in Mozambique, I think, and how you would produce it for a food loss and waste case study. Now, there's lots of talk about there's plenty of money in the food system, and it could come into local and regional markets in, for example, sub-Saharan Africa. But we often don't have the enough business cases and investment cases. So I think that would be one real strong area that we need to do more on. And it's perhaps not only for food loss and waste, it's for the whole food system. Uh, just to tell you that before the next session, we're going to have a 10-minute side event. And Jan Bruce from Wageningen University is going to give a, a a short presentation on agrochain greenhouse gas emission calculator. I hope you can see it on your screen so that you can go to the app and uh, go to the session. So this is a crucial piece of it, knowing where the greenhouse gas emission problems are in the food chain and where we should focus. Uh, and then I just also want to mention that on the hour, we will have our next event. So we've, we've got 11 transformation actions. And the next one is an interest one because it's transforming ourselves. This is the research community. We believe we need a totally different innovation system. And I think it's even come out in this talk. Yeah, uh, you talked about coalitions getting together. Our, our thoughts around the innovation system is that we cannot be doing science business as usual and for whom it may concern. We need science being a knowledge partner to powerful strategic coalitions that we can feed the information in. So we look forward to the next session and thanks once again to this great panel session. Thank you.